howdy, everyone. Eric Allard here at Tilson Homes, Senior Vice President of Tilson and part of the fourth generation of the Tilson family. So glad you're joining us today on Tilson Live. It is Tuesday. Grateful to see everyone. And I am joined as I am every single week. She's so faithful and dedicated and, <laughs> and uh, or, you know, just a glutton for punishment. Mrs. Dawn Dantzler, our Vice President of Marketing and Customer Experience. Hello, Dawn. Hey, Eric. How's it going? It is going great. Uh, it's going great. We got Thanksgiving is done. It is. It is. Uh, we are. We are all the way into the full-on Christmas season decorating swing because it's like seventy-eight degrees again here. So we had <laughs> we've had first fall, um, and so we're we're gearing up for for second fall, and then uh, okay. that followed by uh, fake fall um, and and uh, first winter. So yeah, we're pretty pretty stoked right here. How was Thanksgiving? It's good. It's good. Yeah. Wonderful. It's quiet and at home. Um, I can't believe it's December already tomorrow. It is December yes. 2021. December yeah, 2021. Well, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Um, we've almost made it. We've almost made it. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, obviously, we want everyone to jump in, tell us where you're watching from, where you're building, uh, maybe what you're building, but mm -hmm. uh, put it in the chat. We want to have all your questions, everything about building on your land. That's what we're here to talk about is the little niche of the home building industry known as build on your land. Um, we are, of course, with, we don't say this often. So we're with Tilson Homes. Right. And and we've been doing this for 90 years, building on, not not the not the Tuesday Live Tilson thing. We've been doing that for 90 years. I feel like sometimes we've been doing it for 90 years. But uh, we've been building homes on people's land all over Texas for 90 years. That's mm -hmm. all we've ever done. So if you have a question, if you're considering building a home on your land, really anywhere, but certainly in Texas, we, we might be a pretty good resource for information, we feel like. Would you agree? Yes. I would agree. Yeah. And that, that's why we do these, whether you choose to purchase a home from us or not. Um, we feel that everybody who's building on your land, like this is a, a brand new experience and not a lot of people have done it. So we want you to have as much information as possible because there's a lot of things about the process that may surprise you because um, you, you didn't deal with that when you were building in a subdivision or community. So. Yeah, this came up this morning. I was um, over at where we we're onboarding some new employees, right? Because mm -hmm. it's 2021 and that's what you do in 2021 is you onboard new employees. And yes. uh, so we have some really awesome uh, new members of the sales team that I was over in Katy this morning, um, onboarding them with uh, David Hazy, one of our VPs of sales. He's uh, dedicating his time to help train them. And um, we get to talking about um, just kind of how Texas, we love our deregulated state, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of Texas, we only ever have built in Texas. We only build in Texas. There is no, it blew their mind when I started to tell them that these are now employees of Tilson, albeit new ones, you know, a week to three weeks in, but there is no licensing to be a home builder in the state of Texas. Zero. There's yep. really no such thing as a general contractor in Texas, unless you just you do the, the, the actual just textbook definition that they generally contract stuff, but there's no contractor licensing as far as home construction goes. Um, there is licensing for HVAC, of course, your heating and ventilation, for plumbing, for electrical, mm -hmm. you know, barbers, um, doctors, nail technicians, nail technician. Yes. Yes. Cosmetology. All of that has to be licensed. Irrigation people, you know, put PVC pipe in the ground. Thou shalt be licensed. Run elevators or escalators in Texas must be licensed by TDLR. Build a houses. Yeah. No licensing. None whatsoever. So. You know, knowing that and knowing that, you know, most of what we build and most of where these folks that are watching on your land are wanting to build is, is in a rural area outside of an incorporated city. There are no inspections, folks, if you are outside mm -hmm. of an incorporated city. There are no county inspections. The state doesn't do inspections. Now, there is a state building code. That is true. Right. But there's no real policing arm in the state of Texas for that. It technically rolls up to the state attorney general's office, Ken Paxton currently. Uh, they're dealing with things like, uh, I don't know, like child abuse cases, you know, divorces, uh, uh, domestic violence, things that actually matter, okay, to, to, to them in their office. And um, uh, lawsuits to the federal government. We spend a lot of time in Texas suing the federal government. <laughs> it's our thing. Um, so, so I'm saying that to say, um, there's not really anyone at the state level looking out 
of the mm-hmm. consumer. So it does you, it serves you well, if you're thinking about doing this, to be armed with a lot of information. Uh, obviously, we're going to have the homes inspected at our expense um, at the various stages to make sure it's compliant to code because we're human beings, right? We, we acknowledge that. We're humble about that. So, right. but, but just know, folks, that, that there isn't any type of li- like the, 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 the barrier of entry to be a home builder in Texas is this. Like if, a, if someone mm-hmm. has one of these and has some contacts in here and can make some phone calls and schedule people, that's it. Um, that's all you really have to have. So arm yourself with knowledge um, and uh, and hire a professional that's going to do it right and going to play by the rules. So tell us where you're watching from. Yep. Tell us where you're building. I apologize for the soap, but it just reminded me this morning that folks need yeah. to know that. You need to know that. that there's- well, I was actually thinking about that this weekend because a comment came through Facebook that someone was like, there seems to be a lot of builders popping up in this area. area. And I was like, yeah, that's because there's literally no burden to entry. Like you just say, Hey, I'm a home builder. Like okay. everyone who's, who says they've watched all of our videos, like they could tomorrow be like, I'm a home builder now. Um, yes. cause we, we trained them up. Um, and that's, that's all it takes in the state of Texas, which is terrifying, but yeah. that's, that's, that's where yeah. we are. I, I will say that I, I love the deregulated side of it. Of course that's mm-hmm. good, but it does make it where, you know, w- w- it's not a level playing field. Okay. F- from a business yeah. side. You know, we are we are competing against folks that are knowingly not going to follow the rules, and there's really l- almost zero risk for them. Because um, again, if they if they if they don't if they're not worth anything, if they don't have any assets, if they don't have any you know real estate or buildings or vehicles or employees to continue to support, if it's really just them or maybe a husband wife duo, they could truly just say, you know what, we're tired of this. We don't like these customers yeah, complaining. We're gonna close up shop and uh, declare bankruptcy, and we're not a thing anymore. And so that little warranty we promised you—that's not a thing anymore either. Um, but, you know, change phone numbers, switch carriers. You know, go from T-Mobile to Cricket Mobile. Voila! I'm no longer in business. I'm good. Right. Um, by the way, we are not sponsored by either T-Mobile or Cricket Mobile. Just throwing it out. We're not. So anyway, um, All right. where are folks watching from so far, Don? And then tell us what we're gonna be doing today. All right. Well, we've got Diane and Jake watching from Grayson oh, County, cool. um, getting their wall texture this week. That's exciting. All right. uh, we've got Julie, uh, who is building a farmhouse, of Whitney and Bowie, waiting for our dirt change order uh, due to being 24 inches out of level. Um, mm-hmm. So we need some dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you do. I'm uh, excited about moving on to the next step so I can get some chickens. Tilts and chickens. Awesome. Oh, man. We love so- chickens. Yeah, we. I watched. I, I was getting into some YouTube. We got down. My family got into some YouTube uh, uh, rabbit hole Uh-oh. last night, and we were watching a thing on on uh, chicken tractors, which is you know just a little chicken coop that you move chicken around. Tractor. Yep, okay. it's a chicken coop you move around because of the chickens that and they're in the circle. I was of thinking life. chicken driving a tractor. Right. Yeah. Nope. It's not. Yeah. It's okay. not. If you search for YouTube, but I it is, bet it is those videos are out there too. Guaranteed. <laughs> guaranteed and now we lost half of our audience they're not looking for uh, chicken tractors but uh, anyway you move the coop around and and the chickens fertilize the field the that, that they're in yep and so you know every 24 hours you move them 10 feet over move them 10 feet over anyway is it we're not doing it at the allard house so just it's it's an idea all right <laughs> we have theo uh watching from benchley and robertson right. county building the paladuro plan yeah. assigned final plans a week ago <laughs> Uh, ready to go. So hoping to pour concrete in January. Awesome. All right, Theo. Thanks for hanging there with us, man. Congratulations. Uh, we've got Danielle in Guadalupe County. Just had our design appointment and got our final draft. Um, they've been great about making our home wheelchair accessible. So oh, far, the process has been great. Good. Awesome, Glad to hear man, that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and then we have Marion um, coming in from Houston asking, why is t- isn't Tilson building homes in Harris County anymore? All right. Great question, Marion. And actually, we are still building in Harris County. We will build your home in unincorporated Harris County. We will not build your home inside the city of Houston. Right. Here's why. Uh, here's a reason why. So, A, first of all, most of our customers are, are, are moving out. So 91% of what we build is outside of an incorporated city. So our process, our systems, um, every our, our customer engagement, all of that is set up mm-hmm. for predominantly rural living. Um, needless to say, Houston being the fourth largest city in America, it, it tends to, to, um, not work well with our system or our system doesn't work well with them. And let me explain a little bit about that. So 
Uh, and of course, I mean, we started, look, our roots are in Houston. We started in Houston right. in 1932. We had an office at 45 in Tidwell. We had one on Yale Street from 32 to 61. And then uh, on the Tidwell 45 from 1961 to 2017. So we have some reps in the city of Houston. We understand the city of Houston. Um, the problem in the city of Houston is, is as I just mentioned, its size. Uh, it's, it is a massive, massive bureaucracy. I was listening to some stats this morning. There are 5,000 police officers in the city of Houston, 3,000 uh, firefighters, and uh, countless, you know, trash pickup, you know, large trash collection. There's a problem right now, mm -hmm. the trash collection, they're like two weeks behind for large trash pickup. And that's a big deal right now in Houston because turns out large trash takes up a lot of space on the, on the street. Yeah. So it's a problem and people are upset about it. And instead of the city doing something about that, they're off, you know, going to, to climate change summits overseas and things like that. It's like, look, I get it, but it's important to some people. But let's get the trash picked up on Yale Street. Let's start mm -hmm. there <laughs> before yeah. we move on to those kind of things. So going back to that, it, when we go to build a home on a, on a piece of land inside the city of Houston, it the the problem is when you go down to the city to do permitting, the bureaucracy is so large you never get to talk to the same person twice. So you starting over at square one every time you go in there. All of their rules, regs, um, ordinances are all designed for large scale production. In mm -hmm. other words, three hundred thirty lots, three hundred lots, whatever. And so they apply a lot of the same ordinances and rules that they want even when you're only building like a 50, 100 foot, 50 by 100 foot lot. So for instance, uh, and particularly after Hurricane Harvey, Harvey in 2017, it became exceedingly difficult to build in the city of Houston because they wanted all of these things for water mitigation. So conveyance studies, flood studies, mitigation studies, um, drainage studies, uh, proof that you weren't going to displace water on your neighbor's property, how many cubic feet per minute your lot can handle, how many cubic feet per minute your your lot is going to discharge into the street, and how big is the street gutter, and how much can it handle. And these are things that they impose on, you know, these are could be tens of thousands of dollars in civil engineering studies that they impose mm -hmm. on someone trying to build a $250,000 house. Like, it doesn't make sense. Right. So for those reasons and the fact that we were not able to create a predictable process for our customers, in fact, it was flat out miserable, we mm -hmm. just quit doing it. Um, we said, you know what? The city of Houston, until they figure their stuff out and, and become a streamlined bureaucracy, which is an oxymoron, there's no such thing, but until they can figure out how to not treat everything with exactly that kind of, uh, yeah. of uh, oppressive requirements, I can't, if I, if I can't make a pleasant experience for a customer, I'm not going to participate. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's, you almost don't, you know, it's one thing if we mess it up ourselves. Okay. That's a different deal and we'll own that. But I, if I don't even have a chance at making a customer happy because I cannot set expectations because I cannot predict what the city of Houston is going to do from day to day. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Did we have houses that were taking like two years? Um, we did. We had houses taking over two years. Yeah. We would get, we would get what really the straw that broke the camel's back, Marion, since you asked, we got a permit on a house. It actually happened twice within like a three week period. Got the, got the final, got the permits, which was an, an eight month fight from the city. Got the city building permit, uh, which by the way, was to demolish the existing home that was there. So demoed that and build a new one. So we got all the permits done, all the studies done, the customer did every jump through every hoop the city asked them to do, which were all ridiculous. Uh, we did it all, got out there, demoed the house. Our permit is up there. We set forms on the new home, which is the, those are the batter boards to pour the concrete in, call for the inspection. They go out there and they're like, oh, well, this isn't, this is not high enough. Or no, no, it's too high. You're going to displace water onto this neighbor's property. You can't have this. You need to go back to the city and repermit. Like, but, but I have a permit. This you the city of Houston little choo choo train seal logo up here like it's all this is well you shouldn't have got it shouldn't be here we're not we're not and they read that so it that was kind of oh, like wow. if you're not even gonna gonna adhere to the rules that you set and it's the thing it's it's the, you've heard the phrase moving the goalposts that mm -hmm. was it just became so exhausting for the customer that oh, it's not oh. worth it um, oh. so Harris County all good as long as you're not in a floodplain or floodway. Uh, city of Houston, I'm not doing yeah. it. By the way, city of Austin, same thing. Um, and city of shirts, although we don't really have a lot of demand there anyway. Yeah. They just kind of want to be San Antonio and they're not. <laughs> All right. Well, we have Steve watching from Brazoria County. 
Welcome, Steve. Um, and then you were asking what we were going to talk about. We are going to talk about the Dukes family. They are watching from Georgetown. All right. Um, Thank you for sharing. And we this. are going to show off their beautiful Shiloh um, that are. they built. They were kind enough to let us come in, and they gave Kelsey a tour of their home. Um, so very excited, guys. This is the yeah. video tour format um, that everybody enjoys so much. Um, so very excited to get going with that. So let's go ahead and let them introduce their home. All right, so the Shiloh it is, which by the way, was a model at that location at 45 and Tidwell. It was. For 19 For many, years. many years. Yeah. yeah. Welcome everybody, I'm Kelsey with Tilson Homes and I'm here with the Dukes family at their customized Shiloh seat in Williamson County. So how long have you guys been moved in now? Uh, for about six months. Yeah, and you're loving it? Oh, we yeah. love it, yes. 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 Well, good. And then, so why did you choose the Shiloh plan? What we love about the Shiloh plan is, you know, we have the master bedroom on one side of the house and the other bedrooms on the other, so the kids can stay on their side. to themselves, <laughs> quiet, you know, away from us. Yeah. And so, yeah. And you get a little peace and quiet. You know? Yeah, you have your own little sanctuary yeah, on your half of the exactly. house. And then everything else is kind of in the middle, That all that shared living space, which yeah. is it's a great way of doing yeah. a house, in my opinion. Yeah, we yeah. traveled all the way to Houston just to go see the Shiloh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So when you yeah. saw that, were you already decided on the Shiloh or you walked in and you're like, oh, this it is was definitely yes. it. Yes. That's, that's correct. Yeah. As soon as we walked in. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is our home. Yeah, yeah. this is it. Yeah. I like it. Don't change anything. Yeah. Everything looks good. <laughs> so when it came to customizing the plan, I noticed on the outside of the house, you guys did push out a couple of the rooms mm -hmm. to make it all symmetrical across. Um, what made you decide to do that? Uh, we have a, a long dining room table, uh, a formal dining room table, so I want to make sure that was incorporated into the, into the house, make mm -hmm. sure it fit so we have enough room to walk around. And so I added a couple of feet to the front so it extended out the, the windows out some, the rooms. And to make it even, we, had, and we went ahead and did the, the study and brought that out. And we needed a large Closet. <laughs> Large closet. closet. <laughs> so we extended that out as well. So yeah. To make it all look good in the front. Yeah, I noticed that, that where that master closet is, it's the same depth on the outside of the house as yes. the bedroom that's over on, yes. on yes, the Nicole. side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that looks great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the. We get compliments. Hey, you could have put a bed and furniture in this in the closet. You could. Like, no. <laughs> no, that's our stuff. You just have to take out that awesome built-in, but there's plenty of room. Yeah, there's room. Be another bedroom. Exactly. <laughs> and then on the outside of the house, you did add stone instead of brick. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which I think is a great choice. It looks stunning against the white board and batten. Yeah, the Texas mix is a, a very good color of a, of stone with the grays, the charcoal grays, and uh, the browns and the creams. It, it it's, makes it really pretty. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it stands, stands out. out. Yeah, yes. it really does. And then those dark stain posts yes. really yes. makes the whole thing just pop. Yes. Exactly. You did a great job customizing it and making it your own and picking well, out you. those colors. It looks yeah. really great. Thank you. So yeah. Amazing. Really t takes me back, okay, because obviously when I, when I got my start at Tilson, that was a I said 20 years. I think it was more like, so it was 19, whatever, 1996 was when it was originally built. So whatever that, mm -hmm. from there to, to, to 2017. So I guess that's, that's, yeah, 20 years. So one of the largest kitchens, in fact, if not by square foot, I think it might be the largest kitchen that we have in a, in a stock design. Mm -hmm. um, so that the, the Shiloh, you cannot go wrong um, kitchen size wise. It's just, really really impressive yeah it's a beautiful home um this is to show you guys this is the standard elevation uh that they picked um and like they were talking about they switched out instead of doing the brick um like it's shown here they went ahead and did swapped out and did some stone and get to that so they did some stone and the board and batten um and in the place of that uh, and just made it really really pretty that way um and then like they were talking about um, you know, this is kind of the standard floor plan of the Shiloh. Um, and like Eric was talking about, one of our biggest kitchens. Um, and also has this beautiful center island and ceiling treatment uh, that goes with us. It's very, with it, it's a very, very nice, nice kitchen. Uh, it's one of my favorites uh, that we have. Um, so that's, that's what the plan usually looks like. And it comes, you know, standard as a four bedroom. Um, 
and two and a half bath. And like they were talking about, it is a true split bedroom. Um, so you have this nice master suite over on one side and then all of the shared areas in between and then all of the additional bedrooms over here. So you really do have that like master suite sanctuary um, just apart from everything. So everybody in the family has their own has their own space. Yeah, big, big master bedroom. Uh, I remember when we had the model home set up. I mean, we had king size bed, huge chest of drawers, sitting area. A uh, massive dresser with mirror. I mean, it just, we had really, really big furniture in there. Mm -hmm. It had a 10 foot, six inch ceiling in it um, that comes included. So, I mean, just, just really, really impressive master suite, like you said. And the, and the bathroom yes. is mean, angled shower, angled tub, and they made the mm -hmm. closet even bigger. And they did. Spoiler alert, there's, there's something in the closet that is uh, pretty awesome in this home. Yes. Yeah. Their closet <laughs> is, is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Um, to, to show so you a little bit. Make, yeah. Did you say what? So I was going to say, what other changes did they make? And like, These are all the changes that they made. made <laughs> so, you know, um, she was talking about that they do have a dining room table. That was very important to them, which we'll see more of um, in the next, the next video. So they ended up adding a foot um, on the dining room side, as well as the study where, which would, would be a flex room, but the study um, added, added some square footage there to push out, did it on both sides to make the, make the plan symmetrical. Mm -hmm. And then they also added a lot of square footage to the closet and put this really nice built in centered cabinet um in there so it's got some got some good good storage in there so we'll show you we'll show you that um left that like we were talking about the kitchen so amazing really didn't do a lot to that all all you'll see they did is they added a farmhouse sink um to it um for the most part the master the rest of the master suite stayed very similar uh they just made a few few changes for convenience for them they added um, some french doors going out um, onto the covered porch um, did a barn door instead of a regular door going into the master bath um, and then made that tub even bigger um, and added some jets um, to it. Um, made the shower a little bit more more snazzy, uh, but adding some stuff and then did some some molding and chair a chair rail in the dining room. Um, did a, some additional tiling in the secondary bedrooms um, and also added a three car garage and a garage storage shed. Um, so lots and lots of storage for this family. Oh, and then man. that, you know, did, did some huge changes on that back, back porch, made a big, big area there. So. Yeah. And uh, I think they've roughed in for a sink back there as well, but the, mm -hmm. just the, the, the things that you can do to this house and, and it's got, of course it has some, some op custom options you can do as well. There's some bonus room things you can do with it. Um, but yeah, and, and, and super versatile plan. Mm -hmm very competitively priced um, yes. for the amount of square footage that you're getting. Um, and you'll notice, you know, Don, it, it's, it's, and it, they did a great job on the elevation because it doesn't look this way, but the house is, is very square. Um, mm -hmm. If you think about it, that, it's part of what makes it very, very, a, lot, a little more cost effective. Um, right. Yeah. Cause there's not as many angled frame. walls and yeah. 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 Um, but still just beautiful because you got 10 foot, six inch ceilings and most of the, particularly the center part of that house, especially whenever you do a big cover porch on the back, you've got a lot of attic volume to work with. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can make it feel just enormous out there. And yeah, they did, they did a great job. Yeah. The changes they made were spectacular. Yeah. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the elevation, but just to let everybody get another look at it. Um, absolutely beautiful. I, I love the Texas mix as much as he does. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful combination of colors and stones. Um, so that's just great. And, you know, they did the the board and batten and the stone with the stone wainscot in the front instead of the full brick. Um, just looks beautiful. Um, you know, this is kind of a, a look at that garage because uh, we didn't we didn't get any video footage of it. It was it was full, I believe. But um, so you have they have a full three three cars here. Um, and then they have that back storage space. So where they can bring in the lawn equipment and, and any other toys. And that's a nice big storage area. And then you can see huge huge back porch um yeah and they maintained the real tall ceiling so they could have still mm -hmm. the, the 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 taller windows there in the fender room that you're looking at uh where you maintain in this house a 10 foot six inch ceiling all the way to the back wall uh which really helps with the space plus you don't you know a lot of times we put a porch on the back of a home you have to be concerned about that you know the fender room look great because all that light in there and then you cover it and you right now you shade it but keeping the ceiling high like that really help keep uh, light pouring into that family room space. That was really, really mm -hmm. smart. 
Yeah, beautiful. Which let's see, we've got some comments coming in. Um, David is talking about what a beautiful home it is. He was he was out there and, okay. and actually taking this footage. So the exterior colors were amazing, and yeah, it's a very good choice. And then we have Jackie, who is saying that she loves the Shiloh <laughs> kitchen almost as much as the San Jacinto. Yes, they're they're it's close, beautiful. close yeah. favorites, in in my opinion. Um, yeah, and real close in size. I mean, so that mm -hmm. you know, when I was when I was selling um, for us, we would always when you know, so in in spring we'd have this the San Jacinto. I would always, and of course, at the time the Shiloh was fourteen miles south of us, so we were at exit sixty eight, they were at exit fifty four, and so we oh, were wow. constantly having people go back and forth and compare the two yeah it was i mean the san jacinto's 2497 the shiloh's 2471 so they were i mean super super close in footage but very very different plans and mm -hmm. yeah people jackie to your point it was either like i gotta have the san jacinto kitchen or i gotta have the shiloh kitchen yeah um, and very rarely was it like well, i'll take your leave either one like nope there were two nope, camps. nope. you know which For one you sure. want yeah absolutely well speaking of that kitchen let's take a look at it all right Thank you. Well, let's start by talking about the kitchen. Kitchen. <laughs> uh, this kitchen is pretty much standard. It comes with the Shiloh. Uh, only thing we upgraded was the sink. We did the farmhouse uh, stainless steel mm -hmm. sink. All the appliances is, is by frigid is by frigid air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we went ahead and picked up a frigid air refrigerator to go with everything. And um, with the glass uh, cook cooktop. This fridge is there as well. Um, yeah, I really like the color of the cabinets that you chose in here. They're dark without being too dark. They really give a nice warmth to the room. And they go really well with this granite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do love the farmhouse sink. I think that that's a really easy upgrade that you can make to mm -hmm. make your house feel extra farmhouse. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, and, and tons um, of cabinets. Yeah, and yeah. this is the way that the kitchen comes. It's standard mm -hmm. with this, these super high ceilings and this cool mm -hmm. cutout in yes. the ceiling. Love that. Yeah. Does it include the lighting in there? Or is that something that y'all did? Uh, something I did. We installed. I installed the lights. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really easy. Yeah, customization two wires, that you can just yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then over here, it's nice and open into the little breakfast nook. Yes. Yeah. Love the windows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it lets in so much light. Yes. And right. you can just look out and enjoy your property and see exactly. your cute little dogs. Calling <laughs> 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 on the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Why don't we take a look at the dining room next? That's good. All right. So yeah, you can see why they love that kitchen. Um, yeah, the uh, you know of course they were all electric, so they had the smooth electric cooktop. We can also do gas if that's something that folks are interested in doing. Um, and yeah, we kind of have the as we do a lot of our refrigerator spaces, particularly in that series of plans, the kind of mm -hmm. the built-in space. You didn't really see it in there as much unless you that last clip, but yeah, so you've got kind of a, um, a faux built-in there on the left side, so that it, it does in fact look like whatever fridge you slide in there. It is. So it's a nice, beautiful cabinet feature that's finished off. And that's, yeah, it's a great shot of that kitchen. I mean, it looks, mm -hmm. it's hard to, to describe to people how big that is. Because, I mean, the island itself is obviously over four feet by four feet with the little nooks and pull-out trays and all kinds of stuff in it. And then you've got, you know, four or five feet around that island before you get to the other cabinet. So it's just a, it's, I think it's yes. actually wider than the family room in, in this particular <laughs> home. So yeah, and, and you see the the pendant lights that were there over the island before. So that's what right. uh, the customer had us install. And then at some point after the fact, they as it is their their liberty to do, they just took those out. Two wire nuts on each one, wired up um, uh, their beautiful chandeliers they had in there, and off to the races. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, and I love how there's you know you've got your glass uh, cabinet, your glass door mm -hmm. there for whatever you want to feature. Um, but yeah, great. There's so much because this even this whole thing is full of full of cabinets on yeah, this side. Just, and, yeah. yeah. Tilt out. All trays, the bells and whistles yeah. in this kitchen that are included. Um, like they said, really the only thing that they changed is they went with the farmhouse sink. Um, mm -hmm. because the kitchen was perfect already. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, folks, uh again, put in the chat if you got any questions about uh, this design, questions about building on your land, questions about <laughs> permitting, septics, financing, anything you want to ask us about, that's what we're here for. Put those in the chat while Don walks us through the rest of this. Um, actually, probably while Kelsey walks us through. Yes. So where are we headed next? We are going to go into the dining room next. All right.
Okay, so this is a great table, as you mentioned. I can see how you wanted to make sure that it would fit, push this out just a little bit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you have plans for entertaining? Do you like hosting your family? Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah. Christmas and Thanksgiving. Well, that's coming right on up. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So how many how many people can you fit in this house? Whole family? A lot. A lot. <laughs> we host about maybe three families that come by. And yeah. We, yeah. Know, that's awesome. Plenty of room for entertaining. I mean, between room. this and you've got tons of workspace in the kitchen. Plus, yes. you have the breakfast nook over there. There's. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're not going to have to worry about people finding a place to sit. Exactly. Yeah. And plus, people who like to sit outside, we have the back patio mm -hmm. as well. So they can can hang out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, did this room come standard with the chair rail, or is that something that you added? No, it, that was added. That looks chair. really nice. Mm -hmm. I think it really elevates the space, especially yeah. with this crown molding that you yes. have. Mm -hmm. I mean, with these tall ceilings, I love how they added the extra piece of trim just down below mm -hmm. and then painted so that it would all match because it makes it look like that crown molding just goes on forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like it looks extended. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's very nice. I just love that. Thank you. And then what made you choose the color on the walls? I wanted like a warm, a warm house. Yeah. Know? And One to the, come in and not feel like yeah, it was too this, cold. Yeah, this the stucco is it, the stucco color is, is very pretty, and it's not too dark, not too bright. Loud. It's, yeah, it's just right. It's nice. Not and too warm. in your face. Yeah. Exactly. It's not too yellow either, which is nice. Yes. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be hard to find that warm neutral color without yes. having it turn yes. out yellow. But with as much natural light as you have in here, I think it really looks great. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Well, why don't we go check out the rest of the living room? Okay. All right. All right, I'll follow you. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of the, uh, it had, it, it's again, it's almost identical to the way the model was done in Houston. Mm -hmm. And so having the, it's a very formal home still. Um, and the way they did it, I thought was very, very tasteful, very elegant. You've got the large crown molding. I don't know if you'll see that um, in there. They had chair rail going around. So yeah, there's without the furniture. So you've got two stage crown molding. You've got a big wide baseboard chair rail all the way around. So just, mm -hmm. a, and which goes great because they're, you know, when you see their furniture in it, very large formal, um, their uh, China cabinet, you know, I mean, just, it really right. fits. Um, you can tell they've got a, they got a very particular style in it and very, very tastefully done. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you can also see in this shot, which we, we didn't capture too much in the video, but the, the foyer, this beautiful front door um, is standard on this plan. It's included. Um, Jackie is asking, uh, she said she's she's tuning in late. Did they raise the ceiling heights? Um, no, they did not. These are all yeah. the standard ceiling heights in these rooms. Yeah. Um, these are the, the ones that are included in the plan. Yeah, and now Jackie, it does vary by uh, elevation. So this is the, mm -hmm. the sea elevation of the Shiloh. Um, and so because we have that gable roof end to end, we've got more attic volume to work with. If you build the, the B elevation or even the D elevation, they both have hips. Um, so on the sides, like where the master bedroom is and on the other side of the home that, and on the front, even there is, there are some slopes. It's 10 foot six at the peaks, but there are some, some ceiling slopes, some eight on 12 ceiling slopes in those, but that's just because of the roof line. But on this one, it's 10 foot six, like you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And then we have Jesse tuning in now. So hi, Jesse. Hello, Jesse. Welcome. Um, and the other thing, you know, in this house that you know we talked about this, the symmetry between the dining and the study area. So this is a flex area in the plan, and they chose to enclose it, which will show you what they've done with it kind of later. But just wanted to talk about it now since you can kind of see into that space. Yeah, the French doors on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's beautiful. So let's nice. take a look at the living room next. All right. Oh my gosh, I love that fireplace. Thanks. That is just amazing. It really just draws your eye when you walk into the room. It's a great focal point. Once again, it's a Texas mix. Yep. <laughs> Man, you really can't go wrong with that yeah. one, can you? Plus yeah, with the bean that you brought in, the same color from the outside, I see. Yes. That looks really mm. good. So this comes standard with three windows. Yes. And yes. then since you added this fireplace in the corner, it takes out one, but these windows are still huge. I yes. mean, they let in so much light. Yep. Yes, they That's do. just amazing. <laughs> yeah. So what was kind of your goal for this living room? Did you just want it to feel like kind of 
a gathering space, or some like a little cozy room. Yeah, a gathering space. Um, you can sit back, you know, sit on the couch and watch the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we got a football fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. And then I love that you can just see into the kitchen. You've got this big cutout here on both sides for walking through, plus in the middle. But I like that it still gives just a little bit of separation by having the half walls. Yes. Mm -hmm but it still is just all so open. And then, I mean, you can see all the way through into the dining room too. Correct. Correct. It's all just one big open space. Exactly. Yeah. Well, why don't we go check out the master suite next? All right. All right, let's go. Let's go. So yeah, the custom option there for the fireplace, it can go a couple of different, I've seen it, I've seen us put it in three different places on this plan. Where it is, is, is by far the most common there in the corner. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've seen it, of course, in the middle of the of that rear wall, which again, but they have beautiful views looking out the back. So I do that. And then, yeah, over there, uh, the common wall between the family and master. When you do that, it does kind of stick out a good 28 inches, almost 30 inches, more than that. I want to put the hearth on it. So that's something to consider. But mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the best spot. Not probably. That is the best spot for it by far. Yeah, Absolutely. And then this photo just shows you a good angle on, on what they were talking about that you can see through how it's it's a great combination of open, but also still kind of segmented because, you know, Eric, now we talk about like, do you want your guest coming in and seeing a sink full of dirty dishes like this hides that for you? Yeah, um, by keeping it keeping it a little separate. Yeah, it's particularly given the given the most recent holiday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you really want the gigantic pile of dishes right there in front of, <laughs> in front of everybody? Yeah. So. Um, so Kristen has a question. She's saying, um, I noticed they have some decorative hallway arches. Are those upgrades? So in this particular home, the Shiloh, the, what you're saying, I'm pointing at the people. I'm pointing like people can see where I'm pointing. <laughs> it's 2021. This you think plan. So in this particular plan, no, th this is what we do. So you, when you, when you choose to have arches in your home, you can have them as like kind of as soft arches. You can have them as a full semicircle, or you can have this style where it's 45. So this is a little bit more craftsman style. Mm -hmm. um, but so, so in this particular home, no, they're not upgraded. Uh, so any of our homes that come with arches in them and, the, and the, our work copies are labeled. So our sales consultants can, can walk you through uh, on a plan, which ones have arches, which ones don't. And um, this is what, this is included on the Shiloh plan. Okay, great. Um, and then Jesse's asking, uh, do I see a plug in the floor? So smart. Yes. Yeah, that's what you this do, is. You do. And we can put that in any home that you that you want to. What we do need is uh, dimensions. And so we can mm -hmm. help you with that. Um, you know, obviously you don't want it dead center in the middle of the room. You want your 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 couch or piece of furniture to fall on top of it somewhere. Um, but we can kind of help guide you through that. Um, and we have some people that do multiple floor plugs. But in this particular home, yeah, the way their fireplace and TV and everything is set up to watch whatever football team that was he was talking about, I don't mm -hmm. recall. Um, but the, <laughs> the, the, can, does anybody remember what football team that was? I had no no clue, no clue which football team that might have been. Um, definitely not from Houston, though. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it's that their couch is up there. You know, they don't want the couch backed all the way up to that bar, obviously, right? Because that's where the mm -hmm. bar stools. Um, so the couch is going to kind of be in the middle of the room if they want to have a lamp or a place to plug in, you know, devices. They knew they were going to need a place to plug that in and want a core running across there to that outlet that's in the wall. So great, great yep. idea. Yep, great idea. And then uh, Velia has a question. My husband and I moved into our Tilson home back in October, and we're still waiting for our window screens. Uh, someone <laughs> tell us what was the delay. All right. So um, Velia, a couple of things can happen. So obviously, when we deliver the windows, we don't have the screens on them. The screens do come with them. Um, so but we have found that they get destroyed if we put them on there when we're, we're building the home. So we keep them separate. Most of the time, actually what we do is we leave them at the McCoy's store. So whatever McCoy's that, that delivered the windows, you know, obviously we're dealing with a, a with, I think they call their strategic accounts team at their corporate headquarters in San Marcos, but they will deploy from whatever store. So for instance, in this home, they, these probably came from either the Taylor store or the uh, Georgetown store. Um, and they would, deliver the windows but they'll hang on to the uh screens now mm -hmm. sometimes just like tigers get turned loose on our job sites tigers get loose in the mccoy stores too we have, we found out 
And and sometimes those screens can go missing or they can put an overhead bin or they get smashed by a forklift or something. Uh, and then we have to reorder them. They do, they are made obviously to a certain size from the Crestmark mm -hmm. factory. Do reach out to um, our uh, our warranty department and be sure that we have, we wanna make sure that something slipped through the cracks. We wanna be sure that we still know that, that you don't have those screens. Um, and so that we can make, and sometimes they're in the attic. That's very, very rare. And your builder mm -hmm. would have installed them if they were uh, most likely, but um, that we have been known to have them delivered and put them in the attic to protect them. Um, so they don't get destroyed too, too bad. So great, great okay. question. But you will get screens on all of your operable windows. Yes. All right. Perfect. Well, let's take a look at this beautiful master suite. Let's check it out. All right. Well, this is the suite of master suites. Yes. 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 Wow. The ceilings are so high throughout your entire house. Yes. yes. And is that standard with the plan? Uh, yes, it is. That's just awesome. I mean, yeah. you definitely don't feel cramped at all. No. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> and as you guys mentioned, you came from a two story. Yes. Yes. Were you worried at all about that transition to a one story? No, we, we love it. We love yeah. the single story. You don't have to worry about the stairs hurting your knees or, yeah. like that, or anybody mm -hmm. falling down the yeah. stairs, you know, so. Well, and with a one story, I mean, with these ceiling heights, plus mm -hmm. the spaciousness of the house and the split floor plan, you really, you have as much space as you did before. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's just oh, yeah. a little I think extra. more. Yeah. yeah. A lot more space. Lot more. Yeah. Well, you yeah. definitely, definitely got a good one with this. Yeah. So I love how you've added a little bit extra privacy with these curtains on the yes. side because mm -hmm. you do have these windows back here correct, correct. on either side which mm -hmm. is really awesome so if you wanted to add that extra natural light you could yes, yes. since i work night shift i gotta have blackout curtains yeah so. yeah and you yeah. you definitely have got yeah. plenty of blackout <laughs> curtains exactly all right let's go over here what is this hiding behind the curtains <laughs> French doors. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this goes patio. right out to your patio. That is yes. amazing. Yep. Yeah. You've got your own little sanctuary yeah. if you wanted to. Exactly. That's great. We don't have to walk around to leave the dogs out at night. Yeah, you can just, just open, open it right on us. That's what I do. Yeah, go right back to bed. Yeah, yeah right. that's easy. Yeah. They oh, wake you up in the middle of the night. Yeah. yeah. Like, One of them does. What do they yeah. need? Three in the morning, barking and making noise. Oh my gosh. Put them out. Yeah. <laughs> Let them back in when they come back and play. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We don't have to walk around the house just to do that. We can yeah. Do it right here. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Well, this is great. And oh my gosh, that barn door. Yeah. That is beautiful. I love the yeah. stain on that. It just looks so natural and. Yes, I love that stain. It's... What made you decide to go with the barn door instead of the regular doors? I saw it in another house, but it was in the study. Mm -hmm. uh, but then Cliff's like, no, let's just do it in the bathroom. Do it in the bathroom. Do you have enough wall space for it? Well, yeah, and it kind of saves rail. you some wall space too, because mm -hmm. instead of having to pull the doors out and you know having that infringe on your mm -hmm. space then mm -hmm. you can just slide it all the way across and keep it open if you wanted to mm -hmm. yes so we added good. that as an addition yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. let's go check out that master bathroom, bathroom. Let's go. all right open this fabulous barn door oh my gosh Whew. You're in love. I'm in love. My bath, my entire bathroom is about the size of your tub. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so this is just a dream. Oh yeah. my gosh. It's so spacious. Yes. yes. And we both got each other's um, size. Yeah. yeah. And you've got, even got like a little vanity area yes. here. Mm -hmm. That is great. Yes. And then, so tell me about this tub. It looks a little different. Uh, it's a upgraded uh, tub. I wanted the, like a, diamond shape that's like a superman symbol shape i guess yeah. <laughs> jacuzzi tub so when you get off work you know you want a place to relax and yeah. turn those you know, bubbles on yeah, yeah exactly no that's great and i love that it just gives it fills up that whole area instead of having that extra tile because it does typically come with that oval tub and yes. this just gives you extra yes yes mm -hmm. extra exactly. tub space extra room to just Relax. Exactly. Kick back. Right. Yep. And then you've exactly. got this huge shower. Oh, as well. yeah. Yes. Yes. Love the shower. Love the shower. Glass all the way around. You've even got yep. the little seat in there. Yeah. Yep. And the little 
hold me stuff. The, yeah. the holders. <laughs> the holders. <laughs> I'm sure there's a technical term, right? <laughs> And then I like this floor too. That's a really neat color. Yes, I love the contrasting yeah. different colors. Yeah. And ties in with the granite. You've got the granite down there, mm -hmm. same as here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. It just kind of ties everything all together. Yeah. Yes. That's great. And then over here, I see a gigantic closet. Oh my god. Yes. yes. We my gotta favorite. go check that yes, out. We do. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> This is awesome. Yeah. So you extended out this closet quite a bit, right? Yes. Where did it end before? Uh, it ended about right here. Right here? On this edge. Correct. And then mm -hmm. all of this is just extra. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. You definitely don't have to worry about space in here. Right. Or right. storage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you've got tons of room. You've got this nice window. You can fully get ready in here and not have to worry about if you're out going to look good because you've got these mirrors on yeah. the other yes. side. Mm -hmm. We also have a sitting place mm -hmm. when you want to put on your shoes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you've definitely got plenty of space Correct. right here for it, which yes. is great. Yeah, exactly. And tons and tons of That's, room to hang yeah. things. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you added in these after. Correct. Yeah. Dressers, which yeah. is great. I mean, yeah. you've got mm -hmm. full-size dressers on either side. Plus, it hers. already has all of these <laughs> built-ins. Oh, yeah. Yes. And that comes standard from Tilson. Yeah. The built in. Yeah, those are great, plus the shelf all the way around the top. Mm -hmm. That's correct, yes. You definitely don't have to worry about storage at all. Mm -hmm. Nope, you do not. And then this is awesome, this little centerpiece. So, did this come with it, or did you see it somewhere? I saw it on Pinterest, and um, the builder, he got a hold of this cabinet guy and he built this for me. You know, so. That's awesome. A place where she can put her purses yeah. and her shoes. Whatever. Plus extra storage in the bottom. Exactly. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then you have the mirrors on either side of it. Oh, so yes. you each mm -hmm. have a side. We're not fighting some for space. it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like scooch over, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta see what Move. I look like. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Before you go outside, you look yeah. at yourself. Yeah. Well, this mm -hmm. is awesome. I love everything that you've done in this master suite. It's mm, incredible. It. Thank it. you. Yeah. 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 Well, last but not least, should we check out the study? Let's go. Let's go. All right. That is a so, closet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not even a closet guy, but even I have closet envy. Like that's that is something. Um, yeah, the, the big piece in the middle, and like I said, it's it's. It, I looked at the size wise; it's about the same size as one of the spare bedrooms. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how big. They're actually, a little <laughs> bit wider than the spare bedrooms. So it's it's sizable to say the least. It's sizable. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's it's really really neat. Uh, I'm glad we were able to accommodate that and and mm -hmm. um, get to exactly what they needed for their their space. So. But there was a lot yeah, happening in there. Tell me what you thought about the master. Oh, I love it. It's just such a big room with so many windows and those really high, high ceilings. I really like this touch that he did with the barn door um, yeah. to separate off the the bathroom from it. But yeah, just absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Um, wonderful, wonderful space. Yeah, and carrying that same, um, you know, the theme of the, of the two-step crown molding and the larger, mm -hmm. wider size casing, just really, really great idea um, to have to bring the formal, and the floors throughout the home are just yeah. stunning. Yeah, absolutely um, stunning. And then really, there's really that nice. gorgeous bathroom, um, as you can see that. So he's got his, his big tub um, in there with the bubbles, um, but you've got, you know, his and her vanity space, um, and then that nice oversized walk-in shower it's just beautiful and then you get into this amazing master closet um yeah. so here's that space this is the the cabinet that was made for them custom um, as part of their build and they've they've put mirrors on both ends now but this kind of shows you what it was like um when it was empty but yeah look at all this storage <laughs> mm -hmm. so well, much said, again space. an idea that as bad as i sometimes we we downplayed things on Pinterest that people see, but they saw an idea. They did. And we were able to accommodate, you know, with, with their flexibility and their ideas and, and our flexibility in our in our designs, we were able to accommodate something that they saw on Pinterest mm -hmm. without without going crazy, you know. And yeah. It doesn't have, to, doesn't have to be wild, but yeah, we can build something like this in, in any of our homes. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. We have Tanya asking what the dimensions are on that closet. So let me so see. So I looked. I can... um, oh, it's, okay. Yeah, it's a little over 12 by 13. So it's 12 feet by 13 feet um, in that closet, which is. So yeah, it really, it's like the size of a secondary bedroom. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A big secondary bedroom. Yeah. Very Most secondary nice. bedrooms are like 11 by 12. 
and this 12 by 13. So if you look at our new Oasis plan, it's about the same size as those secondary bedrooms, which are some of the biggest we have in, in any design. Nice. Very nice. Um, and let's see, we got a couple of people checking in. Uh, we got Will coming in. Hi from Klondike. Hey, Will. Welcome back, man. And then we've got Martina. She is coming in a bit late because she was in a meeting that took too long. Did you not tell them? We said two, two. Well, there's things <laughs> happening. We <were> <laughs> uh, she's building in advance. Uh, have our our concrete shop concrete being poured today, ready for the cool. next steps with our home. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Let's well, look. Good. We got a couple. They did not. They mentioned that they're going to go into the study last, but I did want to show you real quick. There are other bedrooms um, in this house. Uh, just we didn't film the kids' rooms. But there are, you know, three other bedrooms on the other side of the house. Um, that all, you know, like all of our bedrooms come with a ceiling fan um, in there. And, you know, they did the same thing throughout the home, same flooring, uh, continued all of the colors um, like you yep. saw before. Um, you return then, air ducts in each room. I'm going to go back to the mechanical stuff. Sorry. Oh, um, sorry. So you got the return yep. air ducts in every room. So again, try and balance that temperature throughout the home, balance the air pressure throughout the home. So you don't have the AC kicking on and sucking the door closed. Mm -hmm. um, all that is, is part of the energy package that we do in every single one of our homes. And I also want to go back and mention something about the tub, um, the, the cabinet fronts that we put on the tub, which are very attractive. But again, there's method to our madness. Um, and you can, I think you can see it from the master um, shot. And yep. that's, uh, yeah, so, and it has it on the side as well. You can kind of barely make it out on that side going towards yeah. the closet. That's actually how we access the drain. If you had to service the drain, you know, sometimes you, people have hair, Don, it turns out. Some people, mm. not all people, but some people do. I can vouch uh, for that. That's right. 50% of our, of, of the hosts of this show have hair. And so <laughs> sometimes you may have to snake a drain, to clear the drain out. Uh, I know you have daughters. I have a daughter. And yeah, I've had to, Yeah. Why are you standing in an inch of water? Tell somebody. So um, <laughs> when it doesn't drain, you can, if, if you can't snake it through the actual drain itself, we have access to be able to service that. And then mm -hmm. this particular one has uh, jets on it as well. So the other door over there is used to access the pump. So there is a, a uh, pump on there on the other side that's plugged in. And so again, same thing. If you had to service it later, if you had to change it out later, um it's on there so you know while the cabinets are beautiful they get a nice custom look there's um there's stuff going on back there uh, right it's yeah much better than cutting into the tile later on and then having to go find right. tile that shocker shocker discontinued um you're not going to have enough in the attic left over to patch it so you have a different color tile and so we found it we, we switched to this a couple of years ago using just cabinet fronts and it's been really really helpful when we do have to go back and service the homes because we do stand Good. behind the products that we build so Awesome. Little, little shameless plug there, but for the warranty team. <laughs> All right. Um, and then this is the bathroom um, over on that other side um, of the home, which is also a very smart design in that you've got the two sinks there, and then you have a door that actually shuts off um, the shower uh, and the commode from the rest of the bathroom. So mm -hmm. if you have multiple people trying to use this to get ready in the morning, you're not waiting. Um, on somebody to get out of the shower so that you can brush your teeth um, or whatever. And they did make a change that they took this tile all the way to the ceiling. Um, it would usually right. stop you know, around there. Um, so that was a good change. And then the utility room that it does come standard with these comes with these cabinets included. And I always love to show off how, how well we trim out the, the dryer vent. It's just, <laughs> I just it's think a thing. it's so cute. I it's just think it's thing. so cute. <laughs> but, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I know they take pride in all of their stuff, but let's go ahead and see their study and, and let them kind of summarize their house for us. Okay. Oh, plenty of room. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You can both work in here and work out. Of course. That's, right. That's, right. <laughs> That's awesome. You so you, ex you bump this room out just a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same as the dining. Correct. To make it match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you need that extra space in here, or uh, just yes, solely I, for I, matching? It was, it was solely for matching, but it does come in handy because we have two, you know, nice size desks. Yeah. You know, so it did work out well. Yeah, and I work from home, so I yeah need yeah. my space. Yeah, you need mm -hmm. your office space plus it's plenty of room in here yes. for yes. extra storage space. You've got your home gym. Yes. You can both work if you exactly. needed to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. 
Well, I love everything that you've done with your home. Thank you. And why don't we head to the kitchen, talk about a few more of the details, and then okay. I'll get out of your hair. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Yes. All right. So why don't you guys give me one last rundown on the details of the house? All right. uh, the square footage of the house is 2,470 square feet. We added about 100 square feet to the house. Yeah. Um, so you really, that's with bumping out the rooms, adding that yes. extra square footage to the closet. Correct. And that's just the living space. It doesn't yes. even include the three car garage or your storage yes. shed or the extra patio space. Correct. 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 Yeah. Um, it's a four bedroom house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two and a half bath. Two and a half bath. Um, plenty of room for everybody. Plenty of room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You definitely don't have to worry about being cramped at all. No. no. Plenty of space for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. And then what? what's your favorite part of the house? The master bedroom. <laughs> that was best. <laughs> Him, the kitchen. Yeah, I love the kitchen. Yes, I love the does. kitchen. Yeah. Um, You've got plenty of space. Plenty of space. Grill up something gourmet. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I have double ovens, so yeah. I can, when Thanksgiving comes, I can have a turkey in one and a cake in the other. So yeah. Oh, so Thanksgiving cake. Hey, yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good way to go. Exactly. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys again for showing me around your house. I've had a great time getting Same to meet both you. of you and Same seeing you. everything that you've done here. Yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. I am just blown away by all the details that you've chosen. You've yeah. really just made this space your own. And yes. yeah. It's Thank great. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, yeah. I love that. All right, well, we hope to one day soon make you all a part of the Tilson family. Thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you soon. Okay, so right. yeah, nice big study, working from home. Mm -hmm. nice to get their lifting on in there. That's good stuff, good habits, good life choices. Yeah. So uh, always cool for, for supporting that. But uh, yeah, beautiful home, beautiful porch, beautiful family. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Duke, for letting us do that, for sharing that space with us. Thank you, Kelsey, for heading out there and doing that. You always do an excellent job. So yes, well done. Absolutely. So do we All have right. any questions? We do have Post some questions. questions in the chat. Uh, ask us anything you want about Build on Your Land, about Tilson, mm -hmm. about the current environment, whatever you want to know, post them in there. We'll be wrapping up here pretty soon, but post your questions yep. in the chat and we'd love to hear from you. All righty. Um, let's see. Tara has a question for an island in the upgraded Laporte. How far up is the, how far out is the overhang for the island? Is it enough to sit under and be comfortable? So it's pretty well the same in all of our homes. I, I pulled that one up. Um, it's usually about a, a 12 inch overhang from where the, uh, the wall is. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's enough to, to it, it's a bar. So it's going to mm -hmm. kind of depend a little bit on what kind of bar stools you get. Um, if, if you, uh, you know, if you get real huge bar stools, then would they have big arms on them? Maybe that may not accommodate, but um, it is the, it is usually at least a 12 inch overhang. So it's enough to, you know, kind of get underneath and have a plate or have a, have a glass of tea or something like that, or a cup of coffee. You're, you're really fine. Um, and I think, I think you're right. I think it was how far out, um, on mm -hmm. that particular one, if, if we want to see how far up it is, the Laporte has a 36 inch tall bar top. Right. Um, in other words, the whole Island would be the same level. So you would need to kind of shop for bar stools based on Better look, yeah, a little bit shorter. Yeah, that that high. So most bar tops are either 36 inch or 42 inch bar top. So just kind of, and, and of course we have it on the plan. So all, your sales consultant knows. Um, you can usually look at the images that Donna Herdiva put on the website as well, and it'll tell you pretty good. Indication. If it's the same height as the rest of the countertop, as like the sink and everything, it's a 36 mm -hmm. inch high bar top. If it's up, kind of like this home, the the Shiloh, then it's a 42 inch. Okay, great. All right, then we have a question from YouTube. I'm getting anxious to get started. From start of foundation to handing us the keys, what is the time frame? Uh, so it depends on where you're building right now, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, so the greater hill country area is a little bit longer. It's closer to that, that 10 to 12 month time frame. As you get closer towards the Gulf Coast, or in some cases, North Texas, it's closer to that nine month time frame. Uh, so it just it really, really depends on exactly where you're building. And, and I don't 
I don't know your name because it's UTS 9000. So um, if you want to reach out to your sales consultant or uh, and they can get you a much better idea or the VP of construction for your area, we could get that as well. Right. All right. And then we've got Jessie sharing how much she loved the house. Beautiful home. I agree with Jessie. She's I right. I agree. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And then we did have one question that came through actually as a private message. So I've gone ahead and, and paraphrased it, but they just wanted to see why we changed our policy to only allowing $20,000 extra for allowances. Okay. So a um, little, little uh, context for what they're asking. And that is, <laughs> so we will allow certain things to be done um, that, that maybe someone doesn't want to pay out of pocket or can't pay out of pocket. They want to include it in the loan. So let's say for instance, what that's really designed for are things like a water well or a septic system and Tilson offers those services. So we can do that for you. We can do your septic for you, but let's mm -hmm. say you're like, well, no, I don't need you to do it for me. I have a, a person that I want to use, you know, my cousin, my brother-in-law or somebody who does septics that to be licensed and all that permitted by the County, but I just need to include the money in the loan. That's what we refer to as, as an allowance. Okay. Um, and so we will allow, you know, 8,000, 10,000, 15,000, whatever you need to put in there to do that. Um, those were designed first and foremost to be things that are pertinent to the completion of the home. So things like septic systems, water wells, driveways, um, things that, that, that are needed to be done to make the house fully functional and able to close. Uh, what we have done on some occasions uh, are things like allow customers to do like a, a shop you know, a, a metal building of some sort or barn or swimming pool on rare occasion. Okay. Those are obviously more than $20,000 now. And right. what we're finding is just like it's taking us longer and longer to get the, the things built, supply chain issues. We are not alone in this fight. Okay. The same mm -hmm. things are being encountered by the pool industry and the metal building industry and the car industry and um, everything industry. Okay. It's hard to get stuff. What we are finding is that there are some homes out there that we've done allowances on, large ones. Now, remember, there's no construction loan with Tilson. So this is Tilson loaning this money out in the interim. Not We're not going to get paid for it from the mortgage company until it's completed and we go to closing. Right. What's happening is, or what has happened, we have a couple of homes out there that this has happened on where we're done with the house. We finished everything we need to do on the house, septic's in, water well's in, but let's say the customer had a... Fifty or sixty thousand uh, dollar metal building or barn allowance, or they had a eighty five thousand dollar pool allowance. Well, the pool contractor isn't done, mm -hmm. or the metal building contractor isn't done, and so now it's holding us up on getting finance, on getting closed, on getting made whole for what we've put out there because that part of the deal, that part of the contract, isn't completed, and because that was done from the lender from the get go that it was going to have a barn, we have to wait until that's yeah. finished until we can get paid. Um, and again, in ordinary times, it has never been an issue because those things are done in, in a timely manner and they're vetted the contractors. And, and I'm not saying that I'm not disparaging the contractors are doing that. Right. I mean, some of them are doing the best they can and, mm -hmm. and it's just, there's no labor out there. Or there's no parts out there. Or they're waiting on parts for the pool pump equipment. Um, Which we completely we, understand. We're having similar issues. Totally get it. Totally get it. But we cannot afford to have, you know, a bunch of houses out there that have uncompleted projects that we're not getting made whole for. So we have put this in place. This is, and it's not saying we won't. Okay. What it is saying is that we need to, it needs to go through uh, one of our VPs of sales in that area. So either Pat or Hunter or David needs to take a look at exactly what you're trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. And then we want to have a conversation with that contractor to find out what their timeframes are really. Um, because we can't have it holding up closing. You don't want it to hold up closing. Right. Um, that's the other thing is our customers are like, well, I would have never done this barn thing if I knew it was going to take longer than the house. Right. Because um, now my house is done and I can't move in. Exactly. You're I don't have a mortgage. It. Yeah. It's, it's messy. So that's, that's really why. So I'm glad, I'm glad that, that the person asked this um, because I did want to kind of address it. And again, it's not mm -hmm. saying, it's not saying no, it is saying that, that we need to look at what's being done, what that contractor's timeframes are. And it may be a no, it may be, it may say, you know what, right now we can't do that. They're not, we're not able to, to accommodate that right now. Cause again, it's, we are technically loaning the money for that and we're not getting made whole until the home and this other ancillary item are completed. So I hope Gosh. that helps explain it. All right. Well, thank all you right. for, for talking about that. No um, and that is all of the questions that I see. So everybody, if you have questions, start typing fast. Brilliant. Brilliant. So yeah, we've got uh, 
man, we're closing out the year. So this is we wonderful. Are. We've got, we've got, we got a month left. We got 26 days till Christmas. Um, and then crazy. 2022 is upon us. Um, so very, very excited. Um, anyway, the, uh, we're, we're, we're pumped. We are going to still keep doing these lives, of course. So tell us if you guys want to hear about some different things. We'd love to have ideas of what you want to hear about. We are going to do some more financing stuff, uh, I think, next week, right? Yes. More financing. More financing. Um, and then anything else you guys want to see? we got some other things on tap that we're doing. we got some videos that we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, Dawn and her team have been very busy with that. And, um, yeah, we, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Anything yeah. else we have, Dawn? Um, Rox is asking, um, everything that you were talking about with, with the delays on outside, is that happening a lot lately? Uh, it is. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, every, everything is taking longer than it did Rox. It's a great, mm -hmm. great question. You know, I, and look, I, I gave an example about buying tires for my truck a couple of weeks ago and buying a seat for a tractor and just this little stuff that has nothing to do with home building whatsoever. Everything is taking longer. Everything is, is back ordered. Um, everybody is understaffed. <laughs> and, and so there's, it's just taking longer. Like I said, the city of Houston, there's a big deal right now that they can't get large garbage pickers pick two yeah. weeks behind. And by the way, it ain't like they were responding within an hour to begin with. So when they say they are two weeks behind, it's two weeks behind of what they already were taking. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's because there's no, there's no people, there's no people to do it. Uh, they can't get parts for their equipment. You know, if they have a truck that goes down and you need a new fuel pump or injector pump or whatever for it, can't, can't be done. I'm waiting right. on a, on an injector pump. I can't get an injector pump for one of, for a particular tractor because it's old. Um, and they don't make it anymore. So you can't, I'm having to wait to get it rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I'm in line. I'm like number 26 in line at this shop in Bryan, Texas to rebuild this injector pump. So it's because there's like three guys who know what they're doing on this particular, you know, John Deere part. So it's just, everybody's having to learn how to do more with less rocks. And, yeah. and in doing so, it's everything's taking longer. And so we've had to kind of reevaluate some of the things that we were able to accommodate before as kind of a convenience to say, you know what, we may not be able to accommodate for that for a time being uh, until everything settles out and stuff's back up to uh, to normal, whatever that okay. looks like. Yeah. Or if you've ever gone to an island and spent time on an island, you just need to lay back and enjoy this because this is straight up island time. Island time. This is island time. <laughs> If you've ever been to an island anywhere in the Caribbean or, you know, Cozumel or Cayman or any of those, this is the Bahamas. They'll tell you it's going to be their Thursday. They just don't bother to tell you which Thursday. And this is the time <laughs> if they tell you to be somewhere for a, a party at seven o'clock, do not show up at seven o'clock because you will be disappointed. Nothing's happening till 11. That's what you need to know <laughs> about island time. That's just the way it is. So, all right. Know, and I'm not. I don't want to make light of, of what people are going through. I know this is an emotionally charged purchase. I know that that's a, it's not a laughing matter, but I am telling you, this is something that if, if we could control it more tightly, believe me, we would. You know, we do not get paid until these homes are completely finished and you close and move in. So there is nobody who wants it done worse than we do. And we trust do. Them. Yeah. So absolutely. If there's a way to make it move faster, we are looking for it. And yeah. so, yeah, I think, I think yep, yep, yep. The Bahamas. I, met, I met Fritz, I met Fritz last night. <laughs> he, was, he was in spring. And so, yeah, the Bahamas, yeah, I, we, we had this exact conversation about island time. Say so just, this is it. Um, and uh, that's, that's the closest thing I can compare it to and keep a smile mm -hmm. on my face. There's yeah. other things I could compare it to, but they don't make me happy. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got um, Martina had an idea for a live. She'd like to meet more of our sales consultants. So we'll have to see if we can get them to come back on with us. Um, Jesse is just letting us know that she loves Tilson Tuesdays. Thank you for watching. Yeah, we sure love sure. talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Peter asking, uh, with all the delays in materials, how long are projects in queue waiting to be released to construction? It feels like we've been waiting for a while. Yeah, Peter, and I, and I appreciate your patience and, and uh, your professionalism in handling it. I do know, again, that one also varies across the state. And we're going to get mm -hmm. um, a better beat on that by county uh, moving forward. That's one of the goals of, of uh, Chris and his team um, going into next year is to be able to project that on a better case county by county. Because uh, it isn't the same. Ever. We have some houses that are being done in, in like 10 months from start to finish. Right. In 12 months, um, some less, uh, depending on where it's being built. And, and complexity and customer involvement and changes and things like that. And we have others that it's taken 16 months. 
because again, no fault of anyone. It's just there's no trades. There's no there's nothing available, or the windows are back ordered. You know, we have a 16 week lead time on some of our windows right now. Oh wow! So, um, and again, Peter. So so what I would say is it depends on exactly where you're 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 located. Uh, we know the sale, the construction VPs have been reaching out uh, as those deals get released, or or the sales consultants or sales VPs will reach out. Um, it we've had it sit as little as three weeks in there. Mm-hmm. We've had them sit as long as seven or eight weeks in there. Again, depending on if there's a foundation crew available, framing crew available, um, and that has a lot to do with where it's being done. The, the real, real hot, hot, high concentration areas are like your New Braunfels area, your Comal County, Hayes County, um, Travis County, even even to some degree Williamson County where, where the Duke's built. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then as you get, again, further, well, Bear County, of course, Kendall, Medina counties. But as you get further to the east, it's 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 not quite as long of a wait. Um, the, the crews are a little bit more in, in abundance. But everybody went to the Hill Country kind of whenever they could right. work from yeah. home or work remotely. Again, not we didn't have a lot of people who were like, ooh, I can't wait to leave uh, Fredericksburg and move to Houston. That's where I've always wanted to be for my retirement. Like, for whatever reason, people don't say that. <laughs> However, the reverse of that is true. A lot, and not just our customers. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the challenge. You know, I mean, you. I saw two articles in the last two days about, uh, you know, one was about how Austin became the most unaffordable city in America overnight. Right. Um, that's a little bit of a of a hyperbole. It's not really the most unaffordable city, but compared to what it once was, mm-hmm. it really it's it's astronomically more expensive to live there than it used to be, and so. All these folks that just moved from Houston, from Dallas, Fort Worth, out to the greater Hill Country area because it's pretty. Um, and so when that happened, there were there was already a strain on a trade base there. Like we were not in 2019, there was a, a trade deficit, if you will. I don't, I don't mean that but from like export import. Right. I'm talking about from a human resources, skilled labor standpoint. There was a deficit already before COVID ever even entered into the picture. Then when that happened and that kind of greased the the skids of the funnel and people started moving faster, it just exasperated the problem. Um, and then take the supply chain shutting down on top of that worldwide. That took a while to catch up to us because there was some mm-hmm. inventory of things. And then once we ran out of stuff that we had on containers that were already in ports, that's what that and that's what we're feeling now. So it's yeah. a kind of a, a a whip in the in the sawhorse kind of thing of of. Um, of what's what we're feeling. So Peter, I, I, I would encourage you to reach out directly to um, your sales consultant or VP of construction and get you a much, much more dialed in time frame of what that looks like. And, and we have no problem having those conversations with you. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. Well, so thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Dawn, for doing this. Absolutely. Um, I know, I know you should, by the way, Dawn, she's sitting there like clicking things and making stuff play and <laughs> bringing up comments and moving screens around. Like that's not happening on accident. Dawn is doing every single one of them. <laughs> she's the puppet master. Um, I'm actually artificial intelligence. I'm not even a real person. So. <laughs> okay. but, but anyway, you know, thank you all for watching these things. We genuinely hope you get information out of them. Uh, ask us any questions. We have all kinds of places you can find us. You can reach us on Facebook. You can reach us on Instagram. You can reach us on our website. We have 12 locations open seven days a week. Mm -hmm. We'd love to sit down with you, go through model homes, go through designs, make changes. And um, YouTube channel. There's a YouTube channel. Yes. A lot of of content on there. And uh, yeah, we just soon hope to make you part of the Tilson family. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye, everybody.